Good morning, observers. Today we've got three interesting stories hitting the changing conditions of our world and the ongoing magnetic pole shift. We're also going to break down some key aspects of space weather and that is where we will begin with the last 24 hours on our star. It was a mostly quiet day. We have a nearly blank Earth facing half of the sun in terms of sunspots, got a large coronal hole there and several plasma filaments. The lone significant event of the last 24 hours registers as an M2 solar flare, but that's a bit confusing. Because as I just said, the sun is pretty blank. Big sunspots turned out of view, still awaiting the next ones. But one of them, incoming up north, released that M2 solar flare and we had visibility from Earth despite not being able to actually see the surface where the sunspot is. Good showing here of how the actual flare event happens above the sunspot where its fields collide in the corona, not down at the actual surface area of the sunspot. Folks, this was huge news last year and it's huge again this year. Jet streams once again shattering records and sailing flights across the Atlantic much faster than usual. This happened at the same time last year, record breaking, and the intensification of these streams, which they blame on global warming, should actually be slowing down, going the other direction if what they say is happening is happening, but they aren't, because this is energetically driven by the magnetic pole shift not thermally driven by gradient. Up next, we're piling on the mountain of unusual and unexpected effects from the May 2024 solar storm. Because of the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, we're seeing a record number of papers like this, noting a record number of record-breaking effects, even though the solar shock waves were modest at worst. That's the signature a super flare should make, not a trifecta of X1s and 2s. Lastly, folks, interesting and nearly sound review of the magnetic pole shift ongoing, what's causing it and the effects it has down the line. In the good news, they suggest there is now also a North Atlantic anomaly. I suppose I mean good science that is nowhere near good news. It's developing to match the one on the south, and they also correctly identify that these ongoing processes, these changes on Earth right now, are not preparing for a full cron geomagnetic reversal. This is, in fact, a geomagnetic excursion, the rapid flip. But it goes off the rails thereafter a bit, trying to suggest that satellite debris is what's responsible for a huge portion of the field loss and the ozone holes. Sadly, this study is hamstrung by the simple fact that these processes are traceable going back to the 1850s, long before satellites. Alas, I guess now we wait for more signs of that North Atlantic anomaly to have its effects. It would probably start at high altitude, something like record-breaking jet streams or something crazy like that. Folks, as you likely know, we're doing one final run of the Suspicious Observer's gear as we make the official transition to the Space Weather News name. Last chance to get the SO label at the link below or get them at the store at ObserverRanch.com. It's also how you begin planning your trip to come see us. Huge events coming the rest of the year, including many not on this list. Full events page at the site as well. Grab some gear, pick a date, come see us, and it starts at ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.